So we're here today uh, with Ian from VTOL, really like trying to have a conversation around, okay, what's actually changing in the industry and, and the partnership that we've done together between Seal North and VTOL. But maybe we could start, Ian, by you just introducing yourself. Um, my name's Ian Butler. I worked with VTOL for 18 years um, and I'm now in the role of the managing the energy transition for shipping for the company, um, which is quite a challenge. And when you say it's quite a challenge of, of having that transition, like what's the main focus areas that you're having as we told in that transition? So we've known that this is coming for a long time in the industry. Um, Paris agreements, it's been on the trajectory, but recently it's regulation globally, which is starting to get everywhere, not just from the shipping industry, but throughout the whole of the commodities business. Um, and for a company like Vito, um, we are a midstream company, so our scope three emissions are hugely looked at, and shipping is the biggest contributor. So we as an organisation, we have to say to our stakeholders that we are focusing on it, um, and you know, working within this department means we need to focus hugely on how we can improve our efficiencies and reduce our emissions. But I guess as a commodity trading house as well, the whole like landscape of sustainability and these regulations, it also provides a business opportunity. We have an aim to be involved in the supply chain for all the commodities. So yes, you know, alternative fuels are going to be uh, a huge future business. Um, and we as a company need to make sure that we are entering those new markets at exactly the right time. And, and what do you see, like, what needs to change in the industry for us to, to transition to a, like a clean uh, shipping in, uh, industry? What, what, what are the bigger drivers that has to, uh, you mentioned some biofuels or alternative fuels. Any other things that you're thinking is, is kind of the, the driving force? So there is an ambition both from the IMO and from regional regulators, the EU and the USA, um, to, you know, decarbonize, which is the, the term that everyone likes to use. Uh, and we need to find lower greenhouse gas intensity fuels. Mm. Um, you know, there's going to be several routes to that. Uh, biofuels is an obvious and easy first stop. You know, um, LNG is a you know lower uh, tank to weight emissions. Again, you know, is going to be part of that transitional um, form for the industry. Um, and then you've got methanol, e-methanol, biomethanol. And of course, ammonia eventually is part of the story, um, depending on you know which um, publications you prefer to, to to read. A lot of people in the industry get very partisan about their preferred alternative fuel. Yeah, you know we have to be certainly agnostic to it and look about the real demand validation. Uh, what is clear that uh, the industry needs to understand its emissions. That's the first point, and that is where a reporting platform like Zero North is incredibly valuable to the industry. Yeah, and maybe talk a little bit more about that, like because I know that like it's something you're passionate around of, of getting that transparency going, and maybe talk about the complexity of, of capturing that data. It's not simple, you know. Um, we are the biggest spot charterer of oil tankers in the world. We charter, you know, uh, four and a half thousand ships a year. We have something like six thousand uh, ship movements uh, within our owned, controlled, and um, time chartered fleet. Uh, and you know you've got a lot of different stakeholders within those chains, um, and to get that full transparency of reporting is complex. You know to find those single sources of truth. And if you talk a little bit more around like what we do already today is, is like driving and using the the software, you know, software to do voice optimization and and so on. Like, uh, how has that change been in, in VTOL? So, you know. Voyage optimization um, is something which we look at. Um, you know, weather routing is incredibly important. You know, um, winter and summer, northern, southern hemispheres, uh, there's lots of challenges. Um, and you know, weather routing is something which um, is a significantly important part of what we're doing. Um, not just um, you know managing our vessels' consumptions and emissions. You know, but also getting real ETAs, you know, and understanding when we've got, you know, a cargo supply chain and we have to uh, fulfill deliverables to our customers, you know, when the ship will actually be there and understanding what the weather it's got to go through first. Yeah. You know. And I guess it's uh, noting that, that bringing a software in to do that and help the operators, it's been quite of a change journey. Um, yeah. 
I mean, I think um, every organisation um, that um, is as big as ours has uh, lots of inefficiencies um, and trying to uh, address those inefficiencies across multiple teams is, as you say, it's quite a challenge. I mean, we're not just in the business of moving crude oil. You know, we are hugely busy with um, other products, dry cargo, coal, uh, LPG, LNG, bitumen. You know, we have a very, very big bunkering business. Um, and again, you know, you're dealing with um, high seas bunkering vessels in the middle of the Pacific. Yeah. You know, and all of this needs to be brought into a common reporting system within the organisation. Is time consuming, has taken a bit of a challenge. And it's fair to say, it's also been a little bit surprised to you on the, in the journey of, of how many systems you actually had yeah. across when you looked at it across. You know, and, you know, the, the, the industry is crying out for, you know, one single system because. You know, most companies have multiple systems to work with, both internally and externally. And as you know, screen time is a big issue. Yeah. You know, our, our guys are busy. They don't have the time to look at um, multiple systems, multiple screens for different parts of their business. You know, and we like to consume as much of our data internally through APIs. And quite frankly, these days, the first question that anybody asks whenever we look at a external provider or anything is, what's the API like and can we see it? Yeah. And, you know, it's it's become part of the industry parlance that everybody needs to know the API and it's hugely important now. Yeah, so you've been 18 years in, in mutual and I've been in the industry for many years and it's like a new word for both of us yeah. in the last years yeah. of like, uh, what is actually an API, right? So like, not a lot of shipping people would sit and talk about APIs a, a few years ago. So, so can you just touch upon like a uh, leading question, of course, but what's the value that you see a company like Sir North have brought to uh, a company like me too? So we have got, as I said, multiple business units um, and those multiple business units have all been operating, you know, in a very um, closed franchise kind of way. By bringing in one common system, that we can start to integrate everything and get much greater efficiencies. Mm. So the first aim is from Zero North is to improve the way that we efficiencies are working, and secondly, you know, um, data transparency is so hugely important. We've got, you know, a number of upcoming regulations uh, where we need to have incredibly accurate data uh, on a live basis, and the only way we can achieve that across the group is by having one common system. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned the uh, the regulations of change as well, right? And and I know another big uh, part of, of, of your focus is, is the upcoming EU ETS. So if you should kind of like give your perspective of where is the industry and, and, and what is the like outside, like where are the industry on EU ETS? So it, there, there's a few of the bigger guys are obviously, you know, very aware of what their ETS exposure is. But my general opinion about the industry, there's a real lack of education. Mm. If you can compare to, you know, um, IMO 2020 um, and how much press coverage there was uh, within the shipping industry, we're not really getting the same kind of, you know, heads up, so to speak. And it's clear that lots of people don't really understand what their exposure is and how it's going to be managed. And and I think it's, it's fair to say I've been fairly vocal around. I uh, think that the uh, MAPC uh, 80 meeting, the IMO meeting that was uh, here just now, didn't kind of get get us where we needed, right? No, I totally agree. And and more because what you also, what we have debated quite a lot is it will bring forward more uh, local regulations, which I think speaks against my business on Sir North business because the more complexity, the better for us. But I just have to say I don't think it's the best for the global. I mean. I think the the IMO sadly didn't do what they needed to do, which was to get complete alignment to the Paris Agreement. And that effectively means that regional regulators have to go ahead and make their own rules. Yeah. And as you mentioned, they're not going to complementary at all. You're going to have the EU creating their own um, ETS. Uh, the USA will do something which is similar, but so dissimilar that you're going to have um, a contrary view on how it's going to be assessed. So again, you need to have really good data science in order to be able to navigate what your exposure is going to be as a trader. We are massively exposed to the spot market mm. and the cost of these carbon regulations will just get passed down the value chain. So and, ultimately, you and ultimately, we will be having to manage those costs. Yeah, yeah. And what we need is robust data science in order to do that. The other regulation that the EU um, which I believe will be uh, voted upon this week, um, is fuel EU. 
and then that gives a massive opportunity for you know companies who can understand the data science to do the pooling mm. where you know lower greenhouse gas intensity fuels will be mandatory but ships which are you know um, burning more than the requirements can you know pull with polluted ships bit, yeah they can offset actually offset each other so yeah. you could have you know one ship with um, burning biofuels you know or e-methanol um, offsetting um, the um, penalties for you know 10 20 other vessels, other vessels. Yeah, and absolutely. again understanding that pooling knowing where you are within that compliance cycle throughout the year so that you could be two-thirds of the way through the year and say you know uh, this is my emissions, this is my future predicted emissions based on my current trade for my fleet. Uh, I need to burn 25% biofuel yeah. in order to become compliant. And the only way we're going to do that is by having good quality data. Yeah. And if I should ask one uh, last question here. So, uh, like, what would your advice be to others that is uh, thinking about like uh, becoming a customer of Zero North? It's, you have to embrace the change. Um, and you know, to, to cope with an international trading and shipping business as we go through the next five to ten years is going to create an enormous amount of change led by regulation. Mm. And the only way you can manage it is by actually knowing what your data is. And you have to embrace the change and, you know, start to understand your footprint and how you can manage those costs and ultimately the industry is heading to uh, a lower emissions environment. You know, we're spending a lot of money on some energy saving technologies on our, on our own ships, uh, which we are seeing you know, real savings um, and real emission reductions. Which really, again, you see on the platform because we have that transparency. Yeah, the so. transparency. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we will be pursuing alternative fuels. Yeah. You know, bio, we really believe that biofuels is going to have a very strong part to play in the future. This again comes into the whole bugger part of our platform, the Zero North platform as well. You know, and, you know, understanding, you know, where you can get um, good quality biofuels. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Ian, it's been a delight, pleasure to sit here and, and chat. And I think we covered quite a lot of ground around both the regulations, what needs to change. But I think for me, the key word that you brought forward is like, you need to be adaptable and you need to be acceptable for the change coming and that this is not just about software, it's about change management. Ian, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you.